you want to know a little secret for the best free thing you can do to support your growing space? You know what it is? You know what it is? It is leaving your leaves or collecting your leaves for a beneficial use. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about all of the amazing things that the leaves do for us, for our plants, for our ecosystem as they fall in the fall, why you should leave your leaves underneath the trees, why you should leave them in your yard. I know, I know your HOA is going to have a field day with this one, y'all, but just give it a listen. Keep an open mind. And if you can't leave your leaves where they fall, then maybe you can consider some other tips and some other uses for those beautiful, magical morsels that fall from the trees. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. I am so glad you're here. We're going to have a leaf party. Welcome to the Growing Space Podcast. I'm your host, Farmer Aaron, owner of The Patio Farmer, and I believe that no matter what size space you have, you can grow food at home. Tune in each week as I share my best tips, tricks, and encouragement for tending to homegrown edible plants. I am here to support your food growing journey. So one of my favorite things about the fall is the beautiful golden, amber, bronze, dark brown hues of the trees in autumn. It's just so lovely. But once the leaves turn color, then they fall. And this is a natural process that the trees just innately know to do. They know that it's time. It's about to be cold. They need to store all of their energy down in their little root systems. And they're going to release the leaves because for the next couple of months through winter, they're not going to be super beneficial to them. It's more helpful for them to store their energy in their roots and wait for spring and wait for that beautiful sun energy to come back in full force. So while the sun is lower in the sky, our days are shorter, the trees release that which is no longer serving them. They release their leaves. Uh, When I learned about trees in elementary and middle school, I mentioned this in my second episode all about fall vegetables, growing fall vegetables. But a little refresher for you. A tree's root systems are as wide as its branches are wide. So when the leaves fall from the trees, they fall where they may, usually all around the tree. And as the leaves are touching the soil, all of the little buggies, fungi, bacteria, mycorrhiza, which is a kind of fungus. We'll talk about fungus at some point. I've got to, I've got to do a whole episode or multiple episodes on, on fungus in the soil and mushrooms and all of that. But anyway, they're there in the soil. They love trees too. And they start feeding on the leaves that fall from the tree, right underneath the tree. How coincidental. Hmm. Nature. It's like there was a plan or something or like an intention or just, you know, a system in place for how all of this should work. Eh? Okay. So the leaves are falling and all of those little insects, worms, microorganisms, fungi, bacteria, they are starting to break down those leaves. Now, as they do that, they are creating compost in place They're creating plant food, nitrogen-rich plant food for the trees. The tree is literally feeding itself with its leaves when they fall. So cool. So like, you know, that alone right there is a great reason to leave your leaves. (laughs) Those leaves are also sheltering all sorts of little critters, right? So things eat the leaves, things live in the leaves. Everything from pollinators like like little swallowtail butterfly babies and, you know, other pollinators, some moths, 
to amphibians, frogs, reptiles, even small mammals like bunnies. Bunnies can build their little winter nests in leaf litter. There's a lot of things that depend on the leaves being there, being where they're supposed to be. It's also interesting to me, you know, one of the one of the tasks that homeowners in particular do in the fall for just maintaining their outdoor space is seed and fertilize their yards. And what's interesting to me is that I say this because I've never actually done this <laughs> personally, personally, like my parents do. And I have, you know, friends that seed their yard. I do not seed my yard. I have a beautiful uh, meadow for a yard. We just have so many wildflowers. We have some grass in there. We've got a lot of clover and a lot of wildflowers like dandelions. And oh my gosh, I have so many violets in my front yard. Dead nettle. Oh my gosh, so much dead nettle (laughs) that comes up. Um, Every year, I always say that our yard has seasons. Our yard blooms. It's it's gorgeous. So I personally don't seed my yard, but many people who do seed their yards in the fall, you seed it and you feed it, right? The leaves actually feed your soil and feed your yard too. So it is kind of counterintuitive to rake or blow or remove the leaves from your yard if you want a healthy yard. <laughs> What you should do instead, maybe, is go through and shred the leaves that have fallen. Even if you just like go and mow over them, that is great. It chops up the leaves. It makes it easier to break down and convert into organic matter for the grass and all of the other little living things that depend on the leaves through the winter. This podcast is sponsored by Plant Club by The Patio Farmer. Plant Club by The Patio Farmer is a monthly subscription service I started in 2020, three years ago, and I actually started it in October. So I'm celebrating a little bit of a Plant Club anniversary. But Plant Club is a membership-based opportunity to take your growing journey to the next level. There are four different membership options to choose from, so you get to decide the amount and kind of support that's right for you. All Plant Club members receive access to my online community through a platform called Circle. Having access to this platform allows members the ability to share pictures, ask questions, celebrate harvest, and get to know each other. All Plant Club members also receive free seeds each month, along with information on how to plant and tend to their crops with seeding instructions and downloadable resources, from the Patio Farmers Resource Library. Membership starts at just $14 a month. You can explore all the membership levels and join Plant Club today by visiting my website, patiofarmer.com slash membership. Now, back to the leaves. I actually found two articles from the National Wildlife Federation. And I found one from the North Carolina Wildlife Federation that I will link for you in the show notes. But according to one of these articles, in 2015, the EPA reported that 13% or 33 million tons of waste in the landfills was yard waste debris. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, there's just like a huge environmental impact for bagging your leaves and leaving them at the curb to be picked up. And sometimes, like depending on where you live, there might be programs in place to convert uh, your yard waste into mulch or, you know, some other kind of beneficial product or maybe use in like a municipal or county composting facility. But By and large, a lot of that just goes into the landfill. There's just such a better use and practice of utilizing leaves. There's great potential for leaves to be a natural mulch. Ding, ding, ding. Plus, leaves are free. If you have trees around you, which, you know, could be a luxury that not all of us have. But if you happen to live somewhere where you have lots of trees all around you, 
you have free mulch, you have free plant food that's given by the trees. There's so many reasons why you should keep your leaves. I just want to talk to those that live in an HOA, Homeowners Association. Uh, A lot of times HOAs can put some pretty strict rules on how you're supposed to keep your lawn tidy and how your property is generally supposed to look. And a lot of times that means not leaving your leaves where they naturally fall, which if you have the ability to leave your leaves where they naturally fall, hands down, 100%, please do. (laughs) If you do have to remove the leaves from your property, consider just a couple of options, right? Other than bagging them up and putting them on the curb. One idea is to go over your leaves with a lawnmower and shred up the leaves into smaller pieces. It'll help them break down faster. If you have kind of a more woody area or area that's less visible maybe to neighbors or your HOA board members, then maybe you can rake and collect your leaves and build a natural brush area, maybe with some branches that fall and then put your leaves over the branches. That will help create habitat for any wildlife. You could also hold on to your leaves. If you compost at home, they make a great source of browns for your compost pile. So you can keep them stored somewhere out of sight (laughs) for your compost. And there's like plenty of ways that you can be inconspicuous about your compost pile too. If you have an HOA that is particular about composting, I am going to do an episode. I mentioned this last week and I'll mention this again here. It's a nice little opportunity for a plug, (laughs) but I am going to do a whole episode on composting. If you have any compost specific questions, I would love to hear from you. You can shoot me an email at thegrowingspacepodcast at gmail.com with all of your compost related questions. And I would love to answer those in the episode that I'm going to do about like composting basics and getting started composting at home. Uh, It'll be later this fall. So stay tuned for that. Send me your questions. I love questions. Okay, so you can collect your leaves for your compost pile. But another one of my favorite things to do in the fall is build raised beds. The reason why I love building raised beds in the fall is not necessarily because all of the things that I'm going to grow in my raised beds for the fall, but more so the ability to turn your fallen leaves into, dare I say it, I'm going to say it. Are you ready? Free soil. What? Yes. Free soil from the leaves. So, you know, you finish the summer season and maybe this was your first year growing food at home or maybe it's your second or third or 10th or 12th or 30th. I love it. I'm here for it all. But you decided like, hey, I think I am ready to add some more space. My growing space. Ready for a new raised bed. Now would be a fantastic and budget-friendly time to go ahead and get your new raised bed frame set If you're going to get a kit, that's great. If you're going to build your own frame, that's great too. Go ahead, get your frame and get it installed where you want it and then start collecting your leaves. Now you collect your leaves and then you dump them in the raised bed. Don't fill your frame with soil and just start collecting all your leaves, literally all your leaves. (laughs) You dump them in the bed. They break down so quickly you water them. You can even like jump in there and stomp around on your leaves. This is a great task. If you have little kiddo, little humans that put their little rain boots on and throw them in your new raised bed with all the leaves and just let them like stomp around and have some fun. And it's great. They are helping to create soil. And as those leaves break down, you're essentially composting in place and building a super nutrient-rich soil right in your raised bed for free. Did I mention that? It's free. When I've done this in the past, I have heaped leaves over my raised bed frame like two feet high four or five times throughout the fall. And that was just from like Thanksgiving until 
the end of February, like early March. Then when you're ready to plant in spring, you just go and get some high quality, always high quality potting soil or raised bed soil and fill up the raised beds. When you go to plant in the spring, you want to have about half of the depth of the raised bed be fresh soil. Starting off with leaves is a fantastic way to offset your initial soil budget. So keep that in mind. It's probably like next to composting is probably one of my favorite things to do with leaves in the fall. Another great uh, use for your leaves, if you do have to remove them from just underneath the trees, is to save them and use them as mulch. Now, the natural function, as we have learned already in this week's episode, is to feed and nourish and mulch our trees. And if you do have to remove them, you can use them the way that they're intended, but in other locations, like in your raised beds or in your pots next to your perennial plants. You can add leaf mulch um, to help keep your perennial plants nice and like tucked in, a little little cozy, a little snuggly, buggly through the fall and winter. This also helps with moisture retention so you don't have to worry as much about watering because isn't that just the first thing you think of in the morning? in like January when it's bitter cold and you're like, oh yeah, I need to go water my blueberry bushes. No, that's not what you want to (laughs) do. So mulch your blueberry bushes instead with leaves and it will just keep them nice and tucked in and cozy and warm and insulated and fed so many, so many perks uh, to using your leaves as mulch. Now, I recently wrote a whole newsletter Um, one of my weekly newsletters on mulching, the pros and cons of mulching. So one of the things that I mentioned in that newsletter was the fact that leaves are a great mulch because they don't affect your soil pH in a really drastic way. So other mulches, specifically like pine-based mulch, like pine needles or like pine bark, they're more acidic or they can acidify your soil. The soil that we use to grow edible plants does need to be a little acidic, but you don't want it to be overly acidic because when your pH is out of whack in your soil, then your plants aren't able to take in nutrients as well as if it's in kind of like this optimal range. So it's not always a good thing to change the soil acidity and leaves are very neutral in that regard. It's another plus for using uh, your leaves as mulch, but more like traditional mulches like a pine bark or a shredded bark mulch or even pine needles. They can be good to use in a raised bed, but usually they don't break down through the winter. And so when you go to plant in the spring, then you have to like pull back the mulch and then, you know, do what you need to do to the soil to get it set for a new season. Then you plant and you seed. And then you know, if you plant, then you can pull the mulch in around the base of the plants right away. If you're seeding, then you have to wait. I mean, it's just like another process that you have to manage is managing that mulch and helping it work for you rather than against you. But if you use leaves, no worries because the leaves, they are always working for you. So use your leaves as your mulch. It's it's fantastic. There are so many great ways that you can use your leaves and be more sustainable and eco-friendly and keep those out of the landfill and love the bugs. And it's free. It's like free plant food. So like seriously, leave the leaves, love the leaves. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode. Super happy that you're here. If you are interested in receiving my weekly newsletter, you can subscribe using the link in the show notes. It's always going to be something that I provide free of cost. Um, There's lots of great information that I pack into each week's content. There's usually like an educational section, almost like a blog post, but very specific. Um, to the time of year and something that you can be doing right now. Um, I also always include a forecast section 
list the different things that you can be seeding or planting right now in Zone 7B 8A. If you decide that you want to become a paid subscriber, which it's just $5 a month, it's nothing too crazy. But if you want to become a paid subscriber to my newsletter, then there's a link for that sign up as well in the show notes. If you become a paid subscriber, you get a copy of my 2023 planning calendar, the year of mastery. It is a almost 50 page digital resource that I created last winter. Um, I'm super proud of it. I think a really helpful resource for any anybody that's growing food at home and you're looking to master uh, six skills. There's worksheets, there's like goal setting sheets for each season. I provide a whole year's worth of forecasts in the calendar. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a really wonderful resource. If you become a paid subscriber to my newsletter, you get that for free, which is a $35 value. Feel free to check that link. It'll be in the show notes. I will also link the different articles about leaving your leaves that I mentioned throughout today's episode in the show notes. And I would love to hear your questions. So like I have mentioned, I have two upcoming episodes planned, one on growing garlic. I love garlic. And then another one all about composting. And I would love to hear your questions related to growing garlic and starting or continuing composting at home. To shoot me some questions to the growing space podcast at gmail.com. And I will be fielding those in those upcoming episodes. It's going to be so great. So thanks for waiting until the end of this episode to hear this fun little tidbit as we sign off for this week. So I've talked about soil pH and nutrients and nitrogen and all of these yummy things that go into our soil and help to support our plants. We have three macronutrients that all plants need to grow and thrive. And the soil acidity is integral into helping the plants absorb those different nutrients. Did you know that you can have your soil tested? Yeah, for sure. You can have your soil tested sometimes for free by your state's cooperative extension. Cooperative extension is usually hosted by the land grant university in your state. Here in North Carolina, it's NC State. In South Carolina, it's Clemson. In Virginia, it's Virginia Tech. So look up your land grant university and check out your local extension office. Here in North Carolina, we have a cooperative extension office in every county, all 100 counties. And you can send off a soil sample to be tested. And depending on the time of year, it could be free or there's a fee. I think it's like five, six dollars per sample. Have your soil tested. The university will process it and it will send back recommendations. You can also do some soil testing at home. I can link to one of my favorite soil test kits uh, that you can do at home. I'll put that in the show notes. uh, So you'll have that as well. Um, I'll also link the information to some of those land grant universities and information on how to send in a soil sample. I will also say one more thing on the topic of soil testing. Usually if you're using a store-bought soil, you shouldn't be as concerned with getting your soil tested every year. Uh, But if you are growing directly in the ground, soil testing is a great practice to do annually, just as a little check-in. So there you go. Okay. Well, uh, check the show notes for all the links to all the things that I mentioned, and I will see you next week. So next week, we are going to talk about cover crops. Oh my gosh. Yes. Cover crops. Uh, So restorative for our soil. I'm really excited to talk to you all about cover crops next week. Tune in, send me your questions, and just enjoy the season, y'all. It's a beautiful time of year. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.